testing, testing. You just click the button. Testing, one. testing. Got a button down there. It should be on. Now I hear you. It's on, huh? Yeah, I yeah. hear you. I got you. Testing, I testing. Yep, I hear you. I don't have a mic testing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the new, that's the new real on the block. Hey, this is this the iPhone 12 right here. Yeah. With no that's mic. That's the real test. <laughs> real test. <laughs> welcome, y'all. Welcome, y'all. Welcome, y'all, to the After Dark with Malcolm and Lisa show. We spent the first hour with Big Twin, Hall E N T. He is a local underground rapper, and he is very, very entertaining. We've been watching him for the past five years do his thing, and his growth, his growth is unquestioned. Uh, we really enjoyed Big Twin. Salute to you, Big Twin. You be careful going home, man. We have to get to our next guest tonight, and they are all about domestic violence and the fight against it, the fight against protecting uh, the women who have been domestically abused and their children. The name of that organization is Reviving and Restoring Pearls. Mm -hmm. Am I forgetting another organization that may be on the panel tonight? No, sir. Everybody okay. is with Reviving oh. and Restoring Pearls. And Reviving and Restoring Pearls Youth Foundation. Reviving and Restoring Pearls Youth Foundation. Yes, sir. What is your organization about, ma'am? <laughs> Helping kids, okay. Now I bet she, she loud at home, man. She, yeah. she loud at home. She, she get up in here. She likes to, uh, yeah, you were supposed to be here, uh, Commander Moon. She, what she actually does is when uh, we're dealing with the the, the mother, she'll take the kids off her side and talk to them and keep their mind on being a kid. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And so she likes to collect uh, clothing, coloring books, colors, puzzles, 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 different things she can do to uh, keep them occupied. Very nice. What? Last year she gave away 20 Easter baskets. Mm -hmm. 20 Easter baskets. Did you make them yourself? Yes, sir. You made them yourself? Mm -hmm. Is this is this auntie or grandma? You make it. Grandma, granny, 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 granny. Not grandma, granny. Gigi. granny. Did granny help you make the baskets, or did you make them all by yourself? I made them all by myself. All oh, by yourself. Mm -hmm. I need to see one of these baskets. You got pictures? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we sure do. Yeah. I need to see some sure pictures. Do. I, I need to see it. some pictures of them baskets. And what she actually did last year is she wrapped them up on Facebook. She gave them away on Facebook. Oh wow. Okay. Was it, a, was, it a, was it a was it a giveaway or a wrap? It was a giveaway. A giveaway. Okay. It was a giveaway. Okay. So all you had to do was like pick a number. All right. And then if she picked the matching number, you got the basket. Okay. She had like ten boys and ten, ten girls. girls and a big as far as Louisiana won a basket. Mm -hmm. Well, next Easter, this uh, next Easter, we need to be a part of that. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see the giveaway, what and maybe we can get some some little some children out to to get involved. Yeah, get them right on here on air. One thing I wanted to point out is Malcolm mentioned that this is a, um, a nonprofit for women, but mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't realize is there are men and children that are also domestically yes. abused. Yes. Domestic yes. abuse yes. is very high in high school. We don't turn anyone yeah. Start So whether it's a man yeah. or a female, yeah. if you are experiencing domestic violence, we will do our best to assist you if we can. Absolutely. And what's your name, ma'am? Introduce yourself My to our listening audience. Is, hi. <laughs> My name is Cassandra Fry, and I am the co-founder and president of Revival Restoring Pearls. Okay. Awesome. 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 Cassandra? Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm going to yes. go ahead and get the whole panel to introduce themselves right quick. What's your name, sir? And what's I'm Seven Johnson, man. I'm Seven a Johnson. I'm speak, a speaker from New Orleans, and I usually speak at the events they've been mm -hmm. given, and so now I'm on the board and the panel representing. Okay. Seven Johnson. We've met Seven, we've met Cassandra. Yes. Now we're meeting the newbie. The newbie, <laughs> yeah, first live interview. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm a, a proud sponsor of Reviving Restoring Pearls. You know, I assist with anything that the families may need, whether it be clothing or, or baby wipes, you know, just like her granddaughter says, you know, there's people out there that need it. You know, everyone's out, out there is going through something. 
that nobody else knows about, and sometimes mm -hmm. they're afraid to speak about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, especially deep uh, personal matters. Some of those personal matters are domestic violence. You know, it, people may feel embarrassed, but they don't need to be embarrassed because they're not alone out there. And there's people that are aware of those situations, and, and we're here to help you. You know, if you take a step, we're going to take ten steps. That's awesome. Get so, into that. So, as a, a male <clears throat> in this, how comfortable are you being in the streets with domestic violence women? Uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable with it. Because you know? that's that was my my big concern. I'm a survivor myself, and mm -hmm. Houston Angels does take care of domestic violence mm -hmm. uh, veterans, uh, disaster relief, and homeless, and we had an opportunity to work with an amazing organization that we were able to take food and groceries to homes where women had been moved from a domestic situation and placed in a, in a safe home apartment. Mm -hmm. And the stuff was so heavy, I needed his help. Mm -hmm. And I had to put myself in their shoes, mm -hmm. because obviously I am in their shoes. Mm -hmm. How would I feel if a man showed up to the door? Right. You know, is there triggers? Right. You know, does, is the man mm -hmm. who abused her, does he have a beard? Yeah. Did he have big muscles? Yeah. You know, the last yeah. time he hit her, was he wearing a black shirt? You know, I kept thinking it. So mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I need you to stay in the background until mm -hmm. we get build a relationship mm -hmm. with these women. Mm -hmm. Because the last thing we wanted to do was cause a trigger. Right. You know, right. there's certain things that he and he'll tell you, you can't touch me in my face. Mm -hmm. That is a that is a trigger for me. Right. Um, and, and he's always like, mm, you know, and just that he doesn't realize what he's doing. But there's just there's a lot of women out there that have triggers that you wouldn't even think of. Right. And, right. And right. I, mm -hmm. I, I think that's the beautiful thing about us being that. with um, with um, the organization is because we get a chance to introduce ourselves when we're doing venues, like if we mm -hmm. do a cruise or we do something. So you mm -hmm. get a chance to really meet us in a setting where mm -hmm. there are other women instead of being in that private setting of right. us coming into your home. So I mm -hmm. think that's the, the good thing about it. Yeah. Well, the reason I ask is because I love the fact that you have two men on your panel because that, mm -hmm. to me, raised a lot of concerns with him because everything we do, we do together. Mm -hmm. And it's like I hated keeping him in the background, especially when I'm taking three and four huge heavy boxes. Mm -hmm. And I just had a, a car accident four years ago, so I have a bad back to begin with. So I'm like, oh, I really need your help. But I had to really step back and think, okay, how did they feel? Mm -hmm. um, after the first five or six deliveries, you know, I brought it up to them. My partner happens to mm -hmm. be a man. Do you have a problem with him helping me? And all of them were great about it. Mm -hmm. We're absolutely great about it. So, you know, I think I overthink a lot of things. And mm -hmm. I, I always think worst case scenario. But that's the perfect point. That's reality. That's, yeah. that's the perfect yeah. point because some people don't think along those lines mm -hmm. of what could trigger a, a survivor yeah. to go back or to relapse into a state of non-confidence, right. you know, uh, non-sociability. You know, they don't think along those lines. And so the very first year we had our conversation crews, we limited the amount of men we had on that conversation crew of greatly. We really right. tried to have, like, minimal right. men on that crew. And we had, um, Reagan is the founder and pre, uh, CEO of the Youth Foundation. My grandson is the co-founder and the president of, of the foundation. We actually had my grandson escort the women just Very to nice. get them comfortable with the fact that even the young men can be taught and trained how to treat a woman right. Right. And then last year we expanded it just a little bit and we had a few more men come on, on the cruise. You know, and so we're getting to a point where we're trying to introduce the male figure not only into our organization right. but into the things that we do to show that not all men are alike so right. you do have good men out there that are willing to support the cause speak up for the cause and be active in the cause right. the same way same way that we are in a sense to say the only way we're going to make a difference is in unity right well not only that but if you could find a male domestic violence Sur big, survivor mm -hmm. sorry yes um to actually speak up because i will tell mm -hmm. you that there's a lot more men that don't come forward than there is You're female right. because it's it's uh, and they feel emasculated uh, nothing against men exactly. but it's 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 their their um their manhood it's yes. their you know they, they don't want exactly 
Um, and you can't blame them for that because no. really women feel the same way. They don't want people to know. Um, I recently had an experience where my story was told for me. Mm -hmm. And I um, now feel re-violated. Mm -hmm. um, nightmares of being unable to sleep. Um, you know, just a lot has happened to me. It's nobody's right to take away your story. When you're ready to tell your story, you tell your story. You know what, Lisa, in my first uh, speaking at a conference was in Austin, and actually it was a it was a minister, pastor on a panel with me, and he's a survivor of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. But, uh, what, I, what I love about what Seven had told me was, we pearls, and these guys are the chain the link yeah, that holds pearls yeah. together. That's yeah. awesome. And we, we have more men. We have Commander Moon mm -hmm. on panel. We have Mr. Tariq Walker from Tariq Philadelphia. Walker. Mm -hmm. We have Deepak Coleman. Yeah, so, he's our CFO. Like we we have awesome. additional gentlemen to just have a, they're not physically present, but right. they're very, very active. Right. Very and, active. That, and that's that's amazing. That's amazing. I'm not saying anything against it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I just had my fears because yeah. of my personality. Yeah. Um, but I, I love it because, yeah. you know, there, men are good health. I mean, muscles and And you said something crucial so that we have actually, we spoke on, we feel very, very, very strongly about, which is no one has the right to tell your story but you. No. That is your story to tell. I've been friends with her for... Long time, long time. Long time, long time. Long time, long time. Long time, long time. <laughs> Do you know she just heard my story last year during the pandemic at a radio interview? Wow. She well, never I can knew believe that because my exact story. There, she knew I was a survivor, right. but she didn't know my exact story right. until last year. And now, this it is flowed, years it after. Flow me because mm -hmm. I'm like, it's you're so there supporting feel. me, you know, right. through it all and me not knowing that she's been through it too. Well, that's actually what helped me heal. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 1999, I think it was, I worked at a hospital with the most beautiful person inside and out. She worked in the marketing department. Never, never once did you see her without a smile on your face, without the most amazing customer service. But the budget for the hospital didn't allow her to have an assistant. And I was bored. I'm a workaholic. So when I would get off my shift, I would go help her for a couple of hours. Even just filing paperwork was a help for her. And we just get to talking and talking and talking and never, never once did I think anything was going on with her. You live in a big fancy house in Kingwood. Mm -hmm. You've got an attorney for a husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got everything I want. And one night I walk into the office and she's crying. Yeah. And I'm like, do you want me to come back? You know, because I didn't know how to respond to her in that manner. And mm -hmm. she's like, can you come in? And I was like, sure. So I came in and she's like, I trust you. She said, I really feel like I can talk to you. Do you have a minute? I was like, yeah. And so she told me, she said, I have a place that I need to go this week, but I don't want to go alone. Would you be willing to go with me? And I was like, okay, well, tell me what place you're talking about. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I don't just go places. Yes. Right, right. Um, and she actually confided in me that she was in a domestic violence situation with her current husband, who is an attorney. Mm -hmm. And... The story she told me that night, I just wanted to die. But I never wanted to tell anybody my story because mm -hmm. it wasn't that I was ashamed of it, but I felt like, when that's my ready. story. That's when my business. Ready. You know, right. I don't think there's one particular, well, Malcolm knows my whole story now, but I don't think there's one particular person in my life that knows my whole story. People mm -hmm. know bits and pieces of it. Mm -hmm. um, but... When she told me her story, the place she wanted me to go to uh, United Way, mm -hmm. United Way out in uh, the Woodlands, mm -hmm. and she just didn't want to go alone. Mm -hmm. So I sat there with her, and the lady kept saying, you know, are you ready to talk? I said, oh, I'm, I'm just here to support her. She said, no, you're not. She said, no, you're not. She said, when you're ready to talk, we're here to listen. And I'm like, your body language. What are you talking about? about? You, you know, I'm playing it off. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, she knew. Yeah. And mm -hmm. probably three or four meetings in, because I ended up going with her every week, three or four meetings in, I just broke down, and it was like, wow. So she actually got me at my own counselor through United Way. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, and she was every bit of 21. I'm like, what can you do to help me? me? Right. You haven't right. even lived yet. You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have that open mind that I needed to have, mm -hmm. but she actually was an amazing help to me. Mm -hmm. My nightmare stopped. I was able to actually talk about it with people 
that I trust in. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for the men, I think there is some women out there that may gravitate towards them as an older brother type figure. Mm -hmm. Because one thing for me is the people that I've shared my story with has all been men. Mm. It's not really been women unless somebody's confided in me and then I've confided back. It was like, I'm, I'm the oldest in my family, so I never had that older brother. Mm -hmm. So I, I was comfortable so after a while telling my story see, to a man. Seemed like to me, and that's just me, I am no professional about it, no means, but if you're comfortable enough to tell it to a man, it seems like you you felt like they were a protector. Uh, yeah. You were looking a for father a figure, I think, uh -huh. because I grew up without my dad, too, yeah. so that played a huge part in, you know, not uh -huh. having an older brother. Not, I mean, I had male role models, but not mm -hmm. somebody that I could be like, hey, I want to talk. You know, and, right. and there are certain people that you may say something to or may not say something to that look at you different. I never wanted to be that person. Right. I didn't want right. you to look different at me. Right. And, you know... Everybody, me and Malcolm have been together seven years. He finally heard my whole story within the last, what, six months, babe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, within the last six months. We've been together seven years. It takes mm -hmm. a lot for me to yeah, trust to, somebody. It, yeah, to go, to go through. Uh, yeah. But I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. I took over the interview. No, that, I, no. I, I love it. <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, that's good. Uh, I truly it love is. our guys being with us because I know that, um, when the guys are with us, like I was just telling you about a protector, uh -huh. and we command the moon, uh -huh. so awesome. I, I love that guy because uh, he not only, there's a many times I want to go with him on a rescue, mm -hmm. and he won't let me go. He'll just call and say, okay, sis, give me the address where I need to bring them. I'm like, I want to go, and he's like, no, I'm going to go. Because he takes it so seriously, so seriously. And he also, he teaches ladies free uh, self-defense. Self mm -hmm. You know, what what we do is like we'll, uh, we'll donate a certain amount to his organization because he can't just want it, just to right. want it. Right. He has to have funds to want right. it. Absolutely. And, you know, he rescued them no matter what the situation is. But no matter the time. He go yeah. get some because uh, we had one lady that was in uh, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Yep. Coordinated their rescue. On a Wednesday morning, that lady was in Tennessee. But by the Friday morning, that lady was sitting out in her mother's front room in Chicago. Mm. With her and her five kids, where the man had beat her and had beat the little six year on the head with a hammer. Tennessee mm. to Chicago. Yeah, Tennessee yep. to Chicago. Tennessee to Chicago. A moon did that? Yeah. Ah. It, yeah. even did and you can't blame them for not wanting to take you along because they can become but very let, dangerous. Let me tell you another thing. A moon was part of a lot of people that know that we had a, a young girl in Dallas, uh, abuser. Daddy was a Dallas police officer. Uh, he kidnapped her kid. He put this woman through the ringer. They went in the house and planted marijuana, all kind of drugs, so she could leave her kid. And this girl was afraid. Brother Moon coordinated with Huey P. Newton Gun Club. And let me tell you something. When that young lady walked in that courtroom that Thursday morning, mm -hmm. with them, uh, them kings with her, she got a son back and they had no more problems. No more problems. No more problems. Awesome. It's because they handled it professionally. Right. It was done the right way, the legal way. An extraction? The legal way. Okay. And then, no matter who they rescued, they still watching over on 24 7. You won't know they're out there, but they're they out there. Lurking in the shadows. Yes. Lurking in the shadows. Yes. And waiting way. for somebody to make the wrong move. Yes, exactly. You don't play your hand. That's it. You don't play your hand. If you play your hand, they're not going to attack. Exactly. So I have to ask one more question, and then I really will step away from you. Okay. <laughs> no, don't do that. This is, this, is, um, this is your pedestal. As a man, what made you make the decision to be a part of an organization like this? Well, for me, I usually speak to women. Like, I, I most of the, the venues and the seminars I do are to empower women. And I have two daughters. So, for me, it's if I can get to women now, those women will be better prepared to answer my daughters. Because I know, even as a father, even as a speaker, my daughter's not going to come to me for everything. 
So I feel like if I strengthen women, then it weakens the chance of a man coming to him. And then, like you say, like with us being a part of this as men, I think another thing is with with these um with these women that we talk to is that they are introduced to a different type of man. Hey. Like when you're so used to a man that you think hitting you and because he takes care of bills so he can put his hands on you and that's being a man, but then you're introduced to a person who my mama taught me empathy, my mama taught me compassion. A lot of times they tell you, um, your mother can't teach you to be a man, but those things that your mom need to teach you helped you to become right. a man. Absolutely. And I think they're introduced to a different type of male figure. That's awesome. What about you, sir? That's hard. hard. <laughs> kind of hard to go behind the, the pro here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my first interview. But, you know, when I first met Revive and Restoring Pearls, you know, I, I like the idea of what they do. You know, I'm passionate about it. And uh, if you think, you know, a woman is loved, it is very important mm -hmm. to both men and women. And especially, I mean, from the day you're born, mm -hmm. if it's been proven that, that babies that aren't held or they don't have that motherly love, they, they tend to have more problems throughout life. You know, emotional uh, problems, they mm -hmm. have uh, problems growing. You know, so it's 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 important that 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 love is protected. You know, and when that love is is not is mistreated or taken advantage of, then you know the whole world is affected by it. You know? Exactly. The na nature is called mother nature because it nurtures us. You know? Well, Women you're doing have, awesome for your first interview, sir. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks like you make you pick the great team. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm very grateful. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I'm very grateful. Everybody on my Facebook, I see y'all. <laughs> Lord, you done stole the show, Jesus. Yeah, but you know, it, it's it's not just you know a crime against another being. It's it's a crime against Mother Nature, you know, because uh, we everybody needs love. You know, every man will forever seek the arms of a woman who has life. You know? Can't go on <laughs> living alone. You know, look at Adam. <laughs> so look at look sad. at him. <laughs> Adam was stuck out, wasn't it, man? He stuck out. <laughs> stuck out. Introduce yourself again to our listening audience. My name is Jason Dixon. And what role do you play in at Reviving and Restoring Pearl Store? I'm, I'm a proud sponsor. Proud, a proud sponsor. sponsor. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with the with the company, sir? A year. With the movement, a year. Yes, How about you, sir? Oh, well, God. three years. Three. It's three years that I've been joining and really speaking at their events. But like, as far as being a part of this organization, has been what like a few. Like weeks, months, or something no, like no, that. No, 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 no. We take from the first we time. We take from spoke. the first time he spoke. Oh, all right, well. well so you the first know, time you spoke, because that shows support right then and there. I can't say, hey guys, I'm Eureka. I can't say too much, but we're working on this huge, huge, huge. project. Huge. All I can say is uh, Netflix. But anyway, and uh -oh. seven. That's a big end. That's yes. That's I didn't hear that though. Netflix <laughs> with seven. Oh, I I'm grateful that seven can lead us in this because I've never did anything like this before. And seven has done roles and all this. So and uh, like I said, it's a huge project for us. And then we're uh, God. He's graciously. Yes, role guys, it's us. huge. It's I can't. We can't. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Netflix <laughs> taking a role of leading us and giving yes. us guidance on what we should and need to be doing in order to actually stay on point and stay in line with what needs to be done and giving us guidance on. Okay, this is what you you know want to consider when you're you're doing your thing, and this is what you don't want to consider. He's been very gracious at that. You know? he, we he, are blessed, and I want to say this. Loudly and proudly, okay. we are gratefully blessed with the type of gentleman that we have, the stand up and honorable gentleman that we have that serve and work with us. Seven said Great something blessed. the other day, and um, it it spoke volumes because I'm the type of person if someone says, "Hey, Ken, revive me, storm pearls, come mm. do this, come," do, I'm gonna up and do it. But someone said something that makes sense. I'm just as valuable as the next person that's doing something. Mm -hmm. If you're going to invite me somewhere, and if I have to pay a fee to go, I don't need to go. Nope. Because right. you invited me. Right. 
And it was just so profound when he said it. I'm like, say it the way you say it itself, please. <laughs> I don't remember I said it. Before. <laughs> I mean, it, it come off the, it come I mean, off the cuff, it don't it, man? Yeah, it, it come off the cuff. But what I was telling them was, I've, I've gotten to a point, um, like I've been speaking for so many years, and I've been, I've done a movie, I've been on, I have a, my own magazine column, I've done magazine covers, and I've learned along the way that you have certain people that will latch on to you mm. to become a leech. Mm -hmm. yes. They're not they're not doing anything yes. for you. They're taking fr away from you. So yes. a lot of times those people may give events and when they see their event isn't doing as well as it should do, they'll tell you to come because you'll be a draw. Yeah. But then with you being a draw to their event, they'll tell you, you got to pay. Oh, well, if you get these amount of people, we're going to sell y'all tickets for this. And so I was telling them, I'm like, see, I'm like this. When somebody asks me to speak somewhere and they can't afford for me to do it, I would graciously let them find someone else because I know I was the first person you asked. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to have that standard with yourself because a lot of times people don't understand, like in our community, you could take the same pair of shoes and sell them for fifteen dollars and nobody will buy them. Mm -hmm. But if you put three hundred dollars on them, everybody will get them. So you can't tell me what you want, pay me for me to do or won't pay me to come to your event or to participate in some of your event, or even if you're not paying, but give it to us, just invite us to it and you're just able to be there and just help others along the way because whatever you saw in me, you felt like I could reach people and that's priceless. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, mm -hmm. and you said a mouthful. Yes. The shoes can be ugly as hell. Yeah. You put a price, you tag, put a on price tag on them. Yeah. Oh, them shoes live. I'm going to buy them tomorrow. You know, and it should, it should be that way. You put just because the shoe was fifteen dollars don't mean it's don't not mean a, it's less than the fifteen hundred. Right. Mm -hmm. But when he when he when he spoke that I'm like, wow, because because Abby, you know, my heart is so big they say do it, I'ma just up and do it. Oh my God. Because this woman gives me the biggest headache on overbooking. On overbooking? Yes. Uh, that's why her and Lisa get along so well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> overbooking. I stay over. Gets, I stay overbooked. Yeah, yes. she she gets me. She yeah. gets me, and I be trying to tell her, Mickey, wait a minute. You just said we could do this, but don't we have this that weekend? Oh wait a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. And no one do not just the overbooking. Okay. Like, yeah. I remember Over when attention. she oh, would she would say she has to pay for everything, and I'm like. Why you don't get right. people to donate that and right. sponsors no. right. and stop Absolutely. coming out your pocket? Exactly. You know, because, yeah. like, it, it's one thing, like, I'm saying. Look, 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 look. what you coming up for? Yeah. Let me tell you, <laughs> she knows the truth. For three years, for three yeah. years, yeah. everything yes. that we've done, even the, even the pockets, conversation I'm like, I can't from believe it, the gift bags, the, yeah. the sponsor shirts, the everything. Like, the very first year that we did the conversation cruise, Everybody's jumping on the page. I want a shirt. I want a shirt. I want a shirt. I want a shirt. I will not tell the dollar amount that she spent on shirts, but everybody that said they wanted a shirt and said they were going to pay her didn't pay her. I just want some money. That money was out of pocket. Shirts. That's ridiculous. That they said they they pocket. ordered them and didn't. Right. right. Ordered shirts and she they she told them how much they cost. Ordered shirts and never paid her. You know. And Did even you? till then, till now, it is a lot that we still do out of pocket. Because at the end of the, and, and I get what Seven's saying. We need to get to a point. We both get yeah. what he's saying. We need to get to yeah. a point where we, because of what we do, try to get somebody to give back to us. Mm -hmm. Because even still to this day, if somebody needs, we're going to do out of pocket. I'm going to give you a prime example. Two weeks ago, we rescued a young lady and her two kids. She went, she bought groceries. Our project coordinator, who's not here at the moment, she couldn't make it tonight because she had another event that involved my grandson. Give her a shout-out. What's her name? Her name is Kamisha Harrison. It's my daughter. Okay. She is our project coordinator. She does an amazing and awesome job. Okay. But the minute that we found out about this young lady and her two kids, between the two of them, they went out, out of pocket and spent over $300. In the rain. Food, groceries, clothing, diapers. White money in the rain, cash money, all kinds of stuff out of pocket. That's why I have such a hard out of pocket time just to help Red Cross and the Salvation Army. Because mm -hmm. as million dollar, billion dollar agencies, mm -hmm. they don't do enough. 
Yes, they don't. And I, I tell everybody all the time, don't donate to them. Donate to the organizations they, you see every day yeah. 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 taking that stuff to the families. Mm -hmm. Because we, I, I didn't get into an argument, but I got into a discussion on mm -hmm. Facebook the other day because some lady was telling her, Don donate it to the Salvation Army. Why? No, no. Why? What are they doing? Nothing. They're selling you this. They're selling this mm -hmm. stuff to the community that good, can't afford. Good, to Goodwill does the same yes. thing. Yeah, good, good, donate okay. to Goodwill. Now then granted, you though, see it on the rack the next day. Granted, for ten educated, for nine ninety nine. She educated me and told me, well, they give jobs to felons and people. That, okay, I that's want, great. I want you to read something. But on what that are paper. you doing for the community? That part where it says what what I wanted to do when I grow up. I want you to read that. Part. Oh, I learned something new. Me, Oshi. My Osha. My Osha. <laughs> That's my first name. You're not supposed to say it. Hold on. You're just as bad as me. I don't say my Oshi. I mean, I was saying my Oshi at first, and she's like, Mosha. I wasn't saying you, Mika. I was saying you, Miki. And I still call her Miki. You still say Miki. Yeah. Thank you. You call her Miki. I'm going to get beat up tonight. I know it. I know it. Let me read this. Let me read this from Miss You, Miki Harmon. Um, keep the uh, camera on her right quick as I read it. There she is right there. Um, I'm not going to read the first name because I'm going to get swung on. But you make it hard <laughs> of reviving and restoring pearls. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, there's that name again. It starts with an M. What, how, how, how you say? Me don't speak no English. <laughs> Was born to John and Brenda King. You want me to skip forward or you want me to read the whole thing? No, I love my parents. Speak okay. Their name. Was born to, Miss Harmon was born to John and Brenda King on August 17th, 1965. She was blessed to have three children, Raven, Fallon, and Rodney. In March 2002, Miss Harmon moved to Houston to leave an abusive marriage. During that time, she was obtained, she, she obtained, excuse me, she obtained her EMT license, medication license, and CNA license. While working on rebuilding herself, she realized that her goal was to teach women to love themselves. April 26, 2018, which is 16 years later, Ms. Harmon formed Reviving Restoring Pearls, a nonprofit organization that brings awareness to domestic violence and various topics that are affecting the community. When I was, a direct quote from Ms. Harmon, when I was growing up, I wanted to, to be a fashion designer that I wanted to be, then I wanted to be a model and a makeup artist. Guess the bruises, I guess, guess what? I achieved all of those when I became a victim of domestic violence. I put clothes together to cover up the bruises. Then I became the model when I would dress and makeup and, a, and makeup artist to mask the bruises and black eyes. Then I became an actress because I played the role of a good wife. The final part I played was Houdini when I said enough. Sorry, y'all. It's very small. Finally, the final part I played was Houdini when I said enough. I disappeared when I moved to another state to start over. I'm a strong lady. I've seen, I've lived, I've overcame, and now I'm a pearl that has been revived and restored. Her mission is to empower women to be all that God has designed them to be, to see themselves and love themselves for the God, for, for who God has created them to be. We have a voice and not just an echo. Mm -hmm. I am walking into greatness that I was de designed for. And you know, it's crazy because when, when I was growing up, I always wanted to be that an actress, a model. And when you're going through domestic violence, you become all that. You become all that in one. All that. Right. Oh, uh, a, a model, an uh, actress, and what else? A makeup, a makeup artist. artist. Fashion designer. Fashion designer. Well, that's cool how she draws that up, huh? But the best you part, I was Houdini because I disappeared. Disappeared, poof. Yes. Into thin air. Yes. Oh. <laughs> because a, when, when I was going through my situation, my, my father didn't know and my brothers didn't know. And I wouldn't tell them because I know what they would do. Right. Retaliate. No, we, they would be, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good word. Thank you, that's a nice word. Off with the head or something, yeah. Yeah. something to the nation. And so I, I love them too much for that, and uh, I moved here, and 
That was the best move I ever done. Best move, best move you ever done was play who Danny. Mm -hmm. You like that, huh? Damn being a makeup artist. Yep. Damn being an actress. Yep. Poof. You don't ever the, get discouraged when you rescue somebody or help somebody and they don't poof. stay Houdini. They don't stay gone. They go back. I tell you a story. I got discouraged about three months, no, four <laughs> months ago. Um, I work in a, on the fifth floor in a building in Bel Air. And I could hear screaming, so I look out the window, and this guy is wailing on this this young lady, just beating her. Then he started beating a little six year old. And my first thing was, I reacted. I got on the elevator, ran downstairs, and got in between. And the more I tried to take his hands from around her neck, the tighter it became. And he was literally choking this woman to death. And I guess where I got discouraged was when the police came and arrested him. She like, he wasn't fighting me. What well, is cold blood? And everybody was out there in the parking lot filming it with their camera, but nobody wanted to help. Nobody, nobody everybody was filming it. They was filming it. We, we had an accident outside of our subdivision the other day where a truck pulls out of our subdivision, and there was a lady and her 13-year-old daughter, 15-year-old daughter, and, and to avoid hitting the truck, she swerved and actually hit an 80-year-old woman mm. head on. Oh she God. was killed instantly, Jesus. and the daughter was life flighted. The sad part about it is somehow her body was outside of the vehicle, and they had covered it with a sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was video leading up to that, but they had to literally shut down the whole street because people were pulling over just to get out of just their cars to take pictures just of the body in the middle of the street. Yes, sir. Somebody's mother, exactly. sister, daughter. You know, yeah. I, that kills me when somebody does that. You're just going to film instead of helping somebody? I never did understand that. Never. And I still yeah. don't understand that. That's what society has become, no. They, and I still don't. You still don't? No, 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 what it is, is we become a society where you go viral and you get so many perks from that. So you right. take a video like that and you get paid for that video because of the likes, because of the views. So people have just gotten numb and then we see so much stuff that they're just numb and desensitized to it mm -hmm. so it's like for anybody it's a chance of because i've heard videos on world star and they're like oh i'm about to put this on world star like and they really think like that's a way to come up yes that's yeah that's a way to come up there monetizing their their mm -hmm. views mm -hmm. is what they're doing and and that's what society has become i don't care yeah. if it's a fight an accident yep. a death uh, a dog that? attack. Uh, I saw a dog attack the other day. Uh, some guys were uh, uh, walking their dog. Well, just say you were walking your dog and your friends were with you. Well, while you're trying to control your dog, your friends are videoing instead of helping you. Help. Stump, you know, that's how it went down. I was just like, but like you said, it's all about monetizing your views. You, yep. you hit the hammer. You hit the hammer on the head that time. Yep. Oh. And also getting back, uh, reviving, restoring pearls. Uh, has the honor of going to the first uh, Stop the Violence yes. where enemies become friends in Waco, Texas on yep. June 26th. And that's being hosted uh, by Miss Boss. Let me see her name. Miss uh, Bossy Lashes. Uh, she originally lives in uh, Dallas right now. And this is a huge event. It's just not domestic violence. It's any type of violence. Well, what they any they type. trying to get the youngsters to put the guns down. Okay. So, so this is a big, huge honor here. And then uh, our third domestic violence conversation cruise is coming up, October 9th. October and 9th. We have. Uh, and it's going to be out of the uh, Port of Kima. Uh, our boat will leave out of the Port of Kima. The Friday night before, we will have a small meet and greet. Uh, is the Marriott Hotel? I'm looking at you, Sissy. D domestic violence crews mm -hmm. on October 9th, correct? Yes. It's yes. Uh, the, the Revival and Restoring Pearls third annual domestic violence conversation cruise. Born into you. And Born into our theme this you. Year, yeah. Our theme this year is pour, uh, pouring, pouring into the restored you. Every year we try to have some type of theme that goes along with it. So that our speakers can speak to that theme, but do it in a way where the ladies don't necessarily feel they're being preached at, mm -hmm. but giving words of advice, giving words of encouragement, you know, for them to see 
that, um, you know, I, I won't say all of us, but those of us that are survivors, we've been in that place where you don't feel like you see that light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. You, you don't feel like you see it. Um, you feel like that you're going through it alone. You feel like that nobody understands where you're coming from or what you're going through. And so when we do these cruises and we are these shelters, we do it in a sense to let these ladies know that even if it's just for a few hours, what you have and what you are in this world right now is important and valuable. It's, it's, got, it's important and it's valuable. And we want you to see that for yourself. So let us help you illuminate you on that. Okay. But by the, speaking to you. The cruises will be totally different this year. Yes. Because uh, totally different, Malcolm. We, uh, wow. All he said is totally different because I don't want to say everything. Uh, you have to be there. We're gonna have. Uh, we're still gonna have Leo Rich doing the uh, comedy. Of course, Seven's gonna be there. Jason's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an organization, domestic violence organization, which is called Ladies with well, Class. Ladies with Class. Out of Atlanta, that we partnered up with. They're gonna be coming They're down. Be coming. We have one of our uh, major sponsors flying in from Philadelphia. We have mm -hmm. another one flying in from California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be covered by a prominent, very prominent magazine. Okay. You really trying not to give up? Uh, I will. I will not give up the goodies. And and it's uh, <laughs> the, so let me tell you the cruise is gonna uh, the cruise is it's. Like I was saying earlier, the seven, the way seven talks and motivates a woman is phenomenal. So of course we want that there. And uh, his wife is always there with him. And I not I'm just gonna put this plug in, ladies. If I get a husband, the way seven loves his wife, I'm not letting him go nowhere. That man loves his and wife. And oh my god, he yes. loves his wife. Yes. You hear me? Yes, it's definitely like, an example. I'm like, wow. If this woman wants this woman gets, and she don't know she get it. But seriously, <laughs> they not only check to I tell Lisa that all the time. I tell Lisa that all the time. You know, love yourself first, and then at the end of the night, love yourself again. Mm -hmm. Love yourself again. Say it's, not, again. It, it's not gonna hurt you to no. love yourself again. And, when you and love people, and I've been like called. Show that man. Right. How love you. Right. Right. That's what some women don't get, and that's what they don't understand. You know, they think if I love myself, it's being selfish. No. It's or vain. Or, or vain. Or when you love yourself enough to show yourself respect, mm -hmm. to show yourself self care, mm -hmm. to show yourself self love, those are demonstrated and shown to that man 
in a way that men see, okay, this is what I need to do to love this woman. Right. And when I love this woman, guess what's going to happen? She's going to love me. Mm. Yeah. And she's going to love you tenfold. Right. And right. then when she loves you tenfold, you turn around, you love her tenfold. Mm -hmm. And everything it's is reciprocated. Been, that's the key word right there. Yes, ma'am. That's the key word. The key word is reciprocity. Yes, ma'am. A lot of people don't get that. They don't understand. How to give back. They don't know they don't nothing about that. that. Our organization is all about reciprocity. You ain't got to give a whole lot to us, but we're going to show them give a whole lot to you. Because guess what? If it ain't you giving something to us, it's him giving something to us. God's going to put them people in place. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. To reciprocate what is needed for us to fulfill this mission. It is an assignment. It's not just an mission. It's an assignment. We have an assignment to let these ladies know that it's okay to love yourself. Yes, no matter what this man told you, mm -hmm. no matter what this man did, mm -hmm. no matter what this man said, mm -hmm. or how he acted, mm -hmm. it is okay for you to love mm -hmm. yourself. Because guess what? God made you perfectly and wonderfully blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He made you that way. Mm -hmm. He made you to be respected. He made you to be loved. Mm -hmm. He made you to be cared for. Why you didn't come from the real? Right. It's not for you to be behind or in front of. It's for you to be right Beside. in front of that man's arm mm -hmm. so he can protect you, honor you, and respect you. Go ahead on, Sister Jones. That's right. <laughs> I look, she like that. <laughs> 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 Let me get off my soapbox. Wait. I, I, I got it. Because I was about to go there. It's about unity, though, Malcolm. It's, yes. It's, and we don't mind. See that we get, we get in trouble a lot like that. But mm -hmm. we don't say, "Here you make it. Here's your sandwich. Here's here mm -hmm. Cassandra. Here. We don't do that. But what we do, we we here's here's why we do a lot of mm -hmm. videos mm -hmm. because the people who donate to us have to see yes. where their money goes. They, yes. they want to see where their money's going yes. because a lot yes. of people will take your money. Yes. And, and go buy a Lamborghini or something. Yeah. Or, or a $300,000 home or something. They're going to yeah. take so, their money and buy a $300 lace front. A lace front. Mm -hmm. Something, something business stupid business. like that. Yes. You know, so so that business. is the only reason, that's the only reason we video anything. Do y'all have anything against that kind of video? No, 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 no. So what we're seeing is what we've had happen in the past. And we've had happen in the
downtown? Yeah, yeah. Downtown. Your, your friends that, that came with you, oh my God. Right. Twenty-six. Stop the violence. Stop yeah. the violence. Stop the violence. Enemies become friends in Waco, it, Texas. It's huge because they're doing video shoots out there. The the news media is covering it. Uh, mm -hmm. The mayor's involved. It's it's really a big thing that that she was led to do, and she's doing it and, and putting it together. We're just grateful and honored we can go take part in it. Yes, that yeah. part. That part. And this is in Waco, Texas. Waco, yes, Texas. In Waco, yes, Texas, the weekend of June 26th. 12 p.m. to 7 Now let now let me ask you. You yes, you sir. said something. I just typed it up and put it in our cap in our, uh, in our comments. You said where enemies become friends. Yes. That's what it looks like. That's the motto. Put your gun down. That's the motto. Oh, oh, oh okay, put I got you. Put your gun okay. down. You said that earlier. Let's Same thing. Fight. And then. Yup, that. Forget about the next yeah. day. Forget about the next day. Today, yeah. you whipped the wrong dude, he gonna shoot and kill you. Yeah. It's things yeah. that change, man. Things Big time. Are, Big time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, saw, I watched the video the other day. Dude, you know, dude stood there. He wasn't trying to fight. But he had a gun on him. He wasn't trying to fight. The dude got close on him and hit, hit him, dropped him. He went straight he in his and back shot, and, shot, and shot him. I was like. Man, it's that easy to lose your life these days. These that days, easy. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. it is. But, but it's all about making the enemy, the dude that you want to shoot, become his friend. Let's yep. talk, yeah. Why are you trying to hurt and kill Why? Right. Is it worth it? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Is it worth it? And it ain't. Is it worth it? It ain't. I done seen plenty of videos. <laughs> they it, hard on the streets when they get in court. They go to crime. But right? it's mm -hmm. worth it. You know, you taking a kid's father away, so now. Y'all doing this to each other. Y'all taking each other's kids' fathers from them. So who gonna teach these kids to be men? Father, right. uncle, brother, whoever mm -hmm. it is. You know what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Seven. She got a trick for you, Sam. Why you Because Seven has a voice. I know.
and I was in love with street life. I've been shot at. I've shot at. I've done all of that. And 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 uh, I, I used to be ashamed. Of that story. For today, but now that I'm past 50 years old, I'm like, you know what? That was 40 years ago. I need to and tell my story. Did you, Hopefully, I can tell you some Yeah, you did. Because that was 30 something odd years ago, so that was a big deal. Look at you now. I learned, you know, I learned a great deal. Yeah. But I was like, uh, I was like, I was ashamed. Is the fact that I'm like I said, I do more things with relationship and women, and like talking to the youth, I've done it a few times, but I've never told people like my story. Yes, when it God. comes to that, like I've been kidnapped yes, three times, I got shot five times, and I was selling drugs. Come so on, for a, a person to see where I was, where I am now, you know, that's enough motivation because what happens is you can't get the suit and tie lawyers to come talk to kids and tell them what they can be when the only thing they see is you went to school and I can't do that. Right. But right. when you have somebody that can say, man, I walk the street, I did this here. I, and that's why mm -hmm. when people tell me like, oh man, you know, your calling might be a pastor. Now it's a different because a lot of times if a group of young men are on the corner and the pastor's riding up, oh man, here come preacher, bro. We're going yep. to leave. But if right. I roll up and they can relate to me, right. yep. I have more of a chance of getting them to come to church. I have right. more of a chance yep. of getting them to listen to me. You know, so right now, that embarrassing thing where I was a straight-A student, went to school for law, had three scholarships, left college to sell drugs, that got to be embarrassing to me. Yeah. Like, I would see kids, and yeah, I would roll man. up, and they'll be like, oh, that's my call, and oh, look at that jewelry, and I'm see, thinking, um, people yeah, looking yeah. at me saying, you know what? You blessed, man, you blessed, and I never realized they had nothing to do with blessing. The devil just didn't mess with me because I was doing what he needed me to do. Mm -hmm. right. So my covering was my mama. Oh, when my mama yeah. was praying for me, when I thought that people were scared of me or I was going in the project and nobody did me nothing, that was a covering for my mama because God knew what I was about to become. I just didn't know what I was doing. You know, so now that embarrassment and that song, I mean, and that, that, that tale that I have to tell people about is something that a lot of people relate to and I think that's the biggest thing with anybody like everybody has a story and when you tell that story there's somebody in that audience can say right. I didn't know how to put it into words but now I get it didn't know how to verbalize yeah but now that he didn't verbalize it it makes more sense Seven, uh, that's they, why they're requesting you to come to Waco to speak to you that's why it's such a powerful correlation because I'm sitting up here listening to you talk about how you were ashamed to tell your story with a domestic violence organization in y'all own way, y'all are in our shoes at one time or another. Yeah. Because as women, we felt those same things, whether it's a woman or a man that has dealt with domestic violence and been a survivor of domestic violence, we felt those same things. We're ashamed to say what we actually went through with that person. We're ashamed to say what it made us do and what it made us feel like. Right. We're ashamed to say those things. But then when you get to a point where you realize and understand that you have to love yourself enough to know that God put you here for a reason and wouldn't be nobody's punching back, and you can actually speak on it, you never know how the story that you have can speak and impact and save somebody else. Yes, you never know. Yes, ma'am. You never know. That's yes, why it's always an opportunity for all of us to say, not just domestic violence survivors, but all of us to say, I have a voice. Right. I'm not just an echo. Stand up, stand up and let them yes, read. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Stand up and let them read. Reviving and restoring I, pearls is what the R R P stands for. Yeah. And I have a voice, Wait, not I just an you. echo, is the motto. motto. That is our motto. We live by that. That's our mantra. Our mantra. We say it daily. We say it day in, day out, midday, noonday, all day. We, we have actually a voice. Are. Well-known uh, artist painted a picture. Mm -hmm. It is a painting. Right? So, 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 so,
it went and matched the face. I have a voice. Because see, when she had that echo, she was speaking and it was just bouncing and bouncing. It was just bouncing. But when she found the courage to speak, and when that voice was heard, It's such a beautiful picture. Encourage, 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 encourage. Every last one you. Stephanie, Stephanie stepped into his. But if there's anybody out there that feels like they have that, that stigma of shame about where they may have come from, what they may have done, look where you are now. If you are in a positive position in your life, it is your responsibility. It is your duty. As a man, as a woman, as a survivor, in any aspect, to speak on it so that somebody can find the courage to, mm -hmm. to make that same change and make a difference. Oh, yeah, you hit me. I'm telling everybody now. I'm telling everybody. <laughs> I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling everybody. You snitching? I'm, I'm going to be a snitch. You snitch. I'm going to be a singing canary. You know, I'm telling you. Because no one has the right to hit anyone. And that's uh, right. That's right. This may sound weird to you guys, but I understand now what I went through mm -hmm. in order to get where I'm at yep. now. So I, uh, I'm grateful for what mm -hmm. I went through. By talking to a listening to her and setting her back on top of the yep. dirt. Yep, yep. You see. Of because I was a part of the daughter. How you gonna support them? You gotta, you gotta act right. You gotta act right. And so that's why I say I'm grateful. I'm gonna continue to serve. I'm gonna continue to do what I want to do. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm honored for these gentlemen that's on this, this, My this God. board yeah. with us. So as long as God say. But I'm just I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just being silly. I'm just being silly.
it's at Nano. We've grown a lot since where we first 17. started. Yeah. We, we, we had some major McDonald's. We yeah. had like an old gospel we song. Had we had been used, abused, spared on, we talked about lied spared on, on, everything. All that. And we used those growing pains. As building stone. As building stone. We trust not God. make us bitter, but to make us trust God. But you know, I was what, bitter. I'm gonna tell y'all. I was bitter. I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna lie. I'm gonna tell you I one situation bitter. that we had, and we had really, it took a lot. We really, 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 and I wasn't the one that was spearheading, and I ain't gonna even lie, because I spent eight years in the army. Army taught me to kill with no compunction. Right. You know, they taught me to shoot expert. Right. I ain't had no problem with that. So right. when I see things, sometimes I see things black and white. Right. It's either right or it's wrong. Yes, ma'am. And we need to handle it this way or we don't. Yes, ma'am. We had a particular lady. That we considered an associate and a friend. And this person just spewed, 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 and spewed all kind of lies oh God. and ugliness. Oh my and God, all because, yes! All because oh we did not help her in the way she felt we should. Oh she felt we should have dropped what we were doing to cater to her. And she wasn't in a life threatening situation. Oh yeah, that's that's the one I was telling you a while back where I was threatening to put it, be put in a trunk, and they were yes. gonna kill me. Mm -hmm. yes. Right, right. It, it was it was bad. It was bad. It was really, really bad. It was because I stepped out of I stepped out of the God in me yes. and me yes. stepped into the human in me. And when you say you can't do that, I said we well, can stop. <laughs> but so what you just did, you just let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell your mafia come yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what made you act right? Is that what put your head back on right? No, I have a conviction. I have a strong conviction. Because I know. And I'll speak to that. I, I know. I was the one speaking. What you need to get a turn involved. Yeah. Get a lawyer involved. Yeah. We need to get this involved. But I didn't we want to. We need to protect our I'm not as, as, I'm not as, 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 uh, what's the word 
I'm looking for. I'm not as mature. Um, Christian, uh, 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 Malcolm, you a PK. I'm not. Malcolm, you a PK. I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not as mature. Uh, uh, spiritually, spiritually it's, mature is what I'm looking for. It took for. me a while to, 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 to do it that. It took me a while to get there a long time because, see, my mentality was if you heard me, I'm going to get you before you get there. Right. right. But then I have to look at my grandbaby right there. How can I say I'm going to build and leave a legacy for my granddaughter if I'm acting a fool and put myself in a picture with my like this your retaliation would be the devil's retribution because when you think about it if you fall into what that anger and realize that maybe that's something God was is just about to give you and you stopping it you'll you'll prevent it you know when you realize a lot of times that'd be like a final test like that that's why a lot of times you can't get mad with a lot of your enemies because God allows them to do things because the test don't have nothing to do with them. It has to do with you. So it was about that lady doing, see, God knows, the devil also knows exactly what it'll take to break you. So he's going to send whatever that is to you a hundredfold. So your test is, God, I've been asking you for this. God wants to see if you really want it enough to do away with self. I, I, I'm not trying to cut you off, but... I've gotten better at 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 at, at bridling my tongue yeah. mm -hmm. and, and, and holding my ego mm -hmm. uh, within. Yeah. But I I was speaking strictly on what she said about going back and befriending. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That, right. part, now, that but part. But listen, I I'm have not trouble gonna, I'm with not, that. I'm gonna go back and help the situation where it's needed. I've never you. Okay. But I'm gonna help you. Mm -hmm. As much as I can help you, but I'm not gonna trust you the way that I used to trust you. Okay. Because see, you already bit me as a snake once. Yeah. And see, my my I'm always looking for the good in everybody. Right. That's the way I was raised. Right. And uh, I know that snake was gonna bite me a long time ago, but I I kept on. I kept nurturing that snake. Right. I kept hugging that snake. Right. I kept Hopefully. giving that snake some milk. Hoping it would love you. Yeah. Yeah. No. We are. Well, I but you, you know what's crazy? It. Just by me, you having that conversation just now, you see how he come back with that answer? Uh huh. That's what I'm telling you. This man is so phenomenal. Yes, ma'am. You just, know, but yes. I, I, I get where he was going yes. at with, with the friendship thing, because that's kind of hard for anybody. Because yeah, I, I think anybody. I'm like that. But I, I, I didn't got to that place like if it has anything to do with business, I can't treat it personal. You know, if this is what I'm supposed to be doing, then it's less of me to sit there and do a perk where well, I can't do that for you because you did me this. You know, so I guess right. that's like the next part of the test. Like I can forgive you and keep going. And that's and that's what and that's what my partner Lisa is at. You know, she's like, babe, this is business and you're talking personal. I she can separate it and still be your friend. And I'm like, nah. nah. I, 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 I can't, man. And that's why we have to teach us. That's what it is. That's, that's, that's what it has to be. You and you and Lee to balance, balance each, each other. Because me and, and my wife know. balance each other. Because exactly. I'm you. And my wife is the forgiven but, stuff. See, then I'm, my wife is like, you. I wouldn't speak uh -huh. to people again. I'm right. Malcolm right. to a certain mm -hmm. point. And then when you you keep talking about, no, because there was time she had to talk me off the edge because I was ready. I'm not going to even kill no more. Right. I like, don't we balance each kill. other, but we balance each other in a way where if I see her way up here, I can talk her down. But then if it's just a, 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 a like a day-to-day -day situation, she's the one with, no, sis, you know, we should do this. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So they talking about us like this, and they doing this. I don't think we need to do that. I'm that one. I'm that one. It's like, no, I ain't trying to hear that. Like, what are we going to do to protect our name? Right. Like, at the end of the day, we're trying to do a positive thing. We don't need nobody tearing our name down with negative blocks. Right. So what are we going to do? But then when it comes to the other side of it, and she gets way up there, I'm like, hold on, sis, hold on, hold on. I ain't got to deal with it. 
laughing, but I'm saying that's real. I'm laughing because that's some real stuff. I just said that for real. I'm like, well, sis, I got and I say it too. I say it too. I you, got no bail but money. You, you, know, know, you better have some bail money. But then I need to say this, man, for real quick. And I got, I cannot let this go unsaid. Because I'm gonna tell this radio show or this radio interview go without saying this. I have to. Because I would be very, very remiss. There are four of us here right now, but there are a few members that are not here that are very privileged. You know, and I want to acknowledge everybody. Obama. Everybody. I want to acknowledge the That's fact Sarah's that free. we've had uh, D. Paul Coleman. He's been a part of us since the very beginning. He's our CFO. He couldn't be here because of his work schedule. But he's very critical to our organization. D. Paul Coleman. D. Paul, yeah. D. Paul Coleman. We love him and we treasure him. D. Paul, him. like the university? Yes. D. Yeah. Paul. Just we treasure him. Yeah. We treasure him. We have Kamisha Harrison. She is our project coordinator. Uh, she had, She's not here because of some commitments with her son. And we treasure her. She's been very, very, very uh, instrumental and very, very good at her role since being given that role. Since the minute we've assigned her that position, she has excelled beyond our expectations. Matter of fact, she made these shirts. That's off her whim, her design, her idea. And I want to do this for us. And I'm not talking about paying somebody to do it. She brought the print press. She brought the cricket machine. She did the whole nine yards and made the shirt. Some on the back, too? Not yet, but there will be. And I want to acknowledge uh, Tyreka Walker. He's a very, very powerful, powerful speaking and motivated man that's committed to community. I want to acknowledge him. He's not here at the moment. You know, I need to acknowledge Seven Johnson. He's actually here with us, but he's been such a strong and proud supporter of our organization from day one. He wanted to say just the last few months, but from the minute he first spoke at our benefit, he's been a member of our family because he spoke, he spoke from his heart. He wasn't expecting to speak. He put something together and he spoke from his heart and it was powerful. And he supported us and been there for us ever since then. And Commander Moon. Thank him. I'm, I'm getting there. We got Commander Moon. Commander Moon is in charge of our rescue and response team and our self-defense instructor. Like that man, from the minute he said that I believe in what y'all are doing, he has never backed down and he has never given any slack in his commitment to us. Not once. Not once. Mr. Jason Dixon, he has been there since the minute he said, I want to help y'all in what y'all are doing. He met us at an event, said, I like what y'all are doing, and he has been very active and very supportive in anything that we ask. Sometimes we don't even have to ask. We just mention and he's right there. Right there. Seven is giving encouraging words and the chance he gets. Deep Paul is giving encouraging words. Tyreka is there. He's possibly giving encouraging words. Commission, she's doing the work behind the scenes that nobody even acknowledges and sees that she does. Like we have so many integral, important pieces and people that play the roles of those pieces that are not here. That I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge. Those are our key think, players right there. Those kids. I <laughs> those think them. kids are. Key and we got players. Isaiah and Reagan with our youth foundation, and they are there no matter what we ask. Look at, see what time it is. Mm -hmm. And this baby's still trying to hang strong. Mm -hmm. She's still trying to hang strong. Mm -hmm. We actually thank God for those that we now see and know truly mean our organization well mm -hmm. and have our organization's interest at heart. We do take donations. And, and, and this, this is another thing that I think, I don't know if everybody else looked at it, but like we just looking when we do our um messages inboxes and all that a lot of times i never worked with guys because it's an evil thing like everybody wants mm -hmm. to leave and being a part of this i've noticed the guys congratulate you like nobody's yes. never envious of somebody else yes it's like you already know your position and you're the best at your position i can't yes. do what jason does i can't yes. do what decoder i can't do what Tariq does i can't do what the ladies do so it's like we celebrate each person in their position. In the and it's vision. so hard to yes. find groups that do that because hey. everybody wants to be a chief. Yes. You know, so it's just, that's the beauty of yes. the way the organization is, is comprised yes. right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and I'm I glad about you that. brought that up to seven is because, like Jason, for instance, if Jason asks a question, like, you know, he's never did a lot of interviews. The 
day. He was kind of nervous, but just by the response you gave him, I'm like, wow. You couldn't just... tell he never did one day. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, it's right. he the... did all right. He did it's all right. It's just the way Salmon yeah. speaks. Like he said, When y'all gave him a chance. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just picking on you. I'm just picking on you, Meek. I'm just picking on you. We take donations. I'm just picking on you. 713-398-9025. That's 713-398-9025. We buy the historic pearl. You can reach Cassandra Fry, Kamisha Harris, Seven Johnson. What's your name? Jason, Jason Dixon. And uh, D. Paul Coleman and Tariq Walker. We have Commander of Moon. You can even reach Candace Joseph because she mm -hmm. does a lot for us. Or you can Let reach, me say this. You can reach the one, the only, the loving. You make a heart. You make a heart. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> let me say this. If you have a situation, number, you can reach any of those members that she just named. But if you're trying to make donations, or if you're trying to actually have an emergency situation, please reach out to Yumiki Harmon at 713-398-9025. Yeah, yeah, 713-398-9025. 713-398-9025. Or you can reach myself, Cassandra Fry, at... 832 832 359 359 5021 5021 Yes, those are two numbers that you use for emergency situation or donations. But if you have any other type of questions, interest, involvement, or support that you want to offer to our organization, you can mention any one, reach any one of the uh, members that were already mentioned. Now, we're going to send y'all to them anyway, so it don't matter. <laughs> no, but I, right? <laughs> I, I'm hoping and I'm praying that more men will start reaching out to seven. Yes. You know, just for support. Support. Yes. And then seven can guide them away from not doing what they think they're about to do. That's, that's what I'm praying right. for. That you so. guys. The men Cassandra, start what's your last name? You, my though. last name is Fry. You know, F just when they're on the edge and I'm ready, guys, F me. If you own the edge and you feel I'm like I'm not sure which one you are. Let me see. I can reach tell you exactly what I'm Johnson. Hold on, let me go over here. Or reach out to Jason Dixon, please. Before you attempt to hit anyone, reach out to these gentlemen. They're always okay. here. Gotcha. They can talk to you. Give you the advice you need. Seven didn't go into his own store, but seven can give you the advice you need. Excuse me, I'm talking. Excuse me, I'm talking. I'm talking. You know what? I'm on my radio interview right now. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't interrupt me. Don't do that. But anyway, gentlemen, this is a serious. This is a serious matter. Verbally abused or physically abused, please reach out to Stephen Johnson. Reach out to him. He will make the time to talk to you and give you advice and will save your life. And if you can't reach Stephen, reach out to Jason. Jason knows how to contact Stephen. Jason knows how to contact everybody. My phone just went dead. But anyway, Jason knows how to contact anybody uh let's just do this as a family that's it right there you know as a family you know what I'm saying we can't do this by ourselves we can't do this by ourselves it's time now and what, what we really honored about is that Real Talk 100 Radio will be doing all the revival we stir up for a friend yeah Love it, man. Love it, love yes. it, love it. Yes, yes, yes. I was, I was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, we love it. We love it. We love it. I was just about to say we have about 15 minutes left in the show. And I want you guys to sum it up. Uh, seven, uh, uh, excuse me, Cassandra. Let the fellas go first. Cassandra, Seven, and you, Mickey, have had quite a bit to say. I want to give Jason a, a, quite a, a, excuse me, I want to give Jason a little bit of time to shine right quick. Jason, sum it up. What can 
reviving and restoring pearls offered to the community? Well, we could offer a, a safe haven, you know. There's a lot of people that, they don't they don't know these kind of organizations are out there. They don't know that someone, someone can actually get them out of the bad situation they in, they're in, put them in another situation where they can actually get reestablished in life. You know? Sometimes it's hard to walk away from your life because that's your life. You know, you have, you got your work schedule around it, you have your friends, your family, your lifestyle, and just, just getting out of your own zone is hard. Even if you're in a bad situation, just, just moving somewhere will be hard on its own, you know? And, and with it being a, a tough situation, sometimes it, it makes it even harder because you have all that stress on you. And then you think if, if, if the woman has kids, you know, she's got to think how she's going to get her kids out, you know. So there's people there that are, are to assist. We care. We're here for you. For you. you, you are a pearl, you know. Pearls are, are rare, beautiful gems. They're not something that is just found just laying down any gravel road, no, they're, they're created through hardships and trials. You know? Wow. And it's, Thank uh, you, man. <laughs> that, it's a beautiful That's thing. That's the best you know? song uh, I've heard from a man. You know, this, everything about you is a miracle. You know, every individual alive today, it took thousands of years and millions of possibilities for you to be here. You know, that's, that's a rare occurrence in what the word rare means in all rarity. You're here and you should, you should be valued, you should be appreciated, um, and people should value you and appreciate you. If you're not feeling that value or appreciation, then you got to get out. You know, you got to go where people can show you that you are valued and appreciated. Um, you know, uh, people are unique. You know, our smiles, our laughter, our ourselves, our, our children. Nobody ever before us or ever after us will, will have you know, the position we have in those lives and those qualities, you know, and, and we don't want to harm those qualities, we want to build those qualities. There you go. Uh, we yeah. want everyone to know that even men and women that are in those situations that we are here to help you build those qualities, you know, don't, don't damper yourself down, don't settle, don't get comfortable in a bad situation because it's not, it's not comfortable, it's uncomfortable. You know, right. you can get out. You can get out. You could. There's people here for you. You know, you're not alone. It's hard. If you got to speak out to someone and tell them to speak out for you, do that. You know, try that. You know, sometimes it's hard to speak out for yourself. Um, you know, it's it's it can be tough at first, but give it a little time and, and you'll feel better. You know, and, and one day your experience will you'll be able to reach out and help somebody that's in that same situation that nobody else can reach except you. So that's a there's, there's pride in your experience. There's pride in uh, getting away from it. So, yes. You know, okay. Yes. <laughs> Man, did you rehearse that? Oh, that was a freestyle. Yeah, that was a freestyle. Oh, that was a freestyle. He hit it all. He hit all of it. Yeah, it was from all of it. He hit every every pressure point. He just he just I was like. Is that true? Oh, wow. I like that. You talking about you a rookie. You did awesome rookie. tonight, man. Yeah. You did he awesome did tonight. This is this is Jason Dixon's first interview tonight, and he, interview. as you just heard it, he doesn't sound like a rookie to me. <laughs> no, not at all. And we're gonna let oh, seven close out. All right. Because we, we us ladies talked about we closed down already. We closed down already. This, okay. this was good right here. Yeah, yes, what sir. he said that was awesome. Sums it up. What he said is awesome. It sums up what we're about. And what Seven brought to our group thread, which is the men that have joined us are our chains. He spoke on what we're about. Seven summed it up on what we are. Mm -hmm. The women and men pulling together to represent men and women, survivor or non-survivor, as a united front as a united group to say the women that are here, whether we're survivors or non-survivors, we're pearls. But the men that are here to help us and support us, they're our chains because they are chains. They are strong. They're strong and they, they hold us up. They can't be broken so they hold it is day. That God, right they do this yes, to hold us up, yes, indeed. to lead God and direct yes, us. I ain't going to start preaching yes, today, indeed. but I'm going to tell you You better get truth. that camera off uh -huh. of me because uh -huh. it's about to get going. <laughs> 
They here to lead God, direct us, and I'm grateful for y'all. I love these men that we have. I'm grateful for y'all. I Thank love. You. Now y'all got five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Who got five dollars? I was acting silly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you, you got, got five dollars. I don't got no five dollars. You got the five dollars. <laughs> it's on my cross, but I ain't got nothing in cash. We thank uh, Reviving and yes. Restoring Pearls yes, yes, so yes. much for coming out tonight. I'd, I'd like you, Miki, and Cassandra to stand up one time together and just show your, your T-shirt off and let them know if you have any of these uh, any of this merchandise that you would like. This, Actually, that's a form of donations also. Yes, these shirts can be ordered. Uh, these shirts we sell for $20. Reviving and store, Restoring yes. Pearls. So the RRP stands for Reviving Restoring Pearls. And if nobody's explained it at this point, the reason we came up with Reviving Restoring Pearls is because you look at, and, and my sissy does it best when she explains it, but I'm going to do my best to try and, and say it for her because she don't like talking. So <laughs> when you look at when you're actually put in position where you're damaged and you're hurt, and you're not the same. When you finally find your way back to God, He will revive you, He will restore you, and He will turn you into that person you were meant to be. Yes, ma'am. And we get that from the fact that if you take a single grain of sand, which each one of us are, each one of us is a single grain of sand, and you take that grain of sand and you put it in an oyster, uh -huh. that oyster sits at the bottom of the ocean. Uh huh. And, and it gets tussled. Uh -huh. And it gets bounced around. Uh -huh. And it gets rolled around. Yes, ma'am. And it gets roughed up. And it gets tossed about. And it gets thrown around. And it gets beat up. And uh -huh. it gets run through the waves. Yes, and it gets done all kind of ways. But at the end of the day, when that damn old oyster is fished out of the sea uh -huh. and popped open, what do you find in it? A pearl. You find a pearl that you can't find nowhere else until it's angry. Right. And pearls the come in different shapes, shapes sizes, and, and colors. They said that in unison. Say it one more time. <laughs> pearls come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. There you have it. There you have it. That is the conclusion of our interview tonight yes. with Reviving and Restoring Pearls. This is Cassandra. This is Yumiki. This is Jason. This is Seven. They've got a lot coming up soon. And we hope to be right there with them, standing Netflix. beside them along the way. Join us. Join Netflix. us. Join we us are. And donate. <laughs> we are After Dark with Malcolm and Lisa of Real Talk 100 Radio. And we'll see you soon. Thank that you. Is, that is the conclusion of our interview tonight. We will see y'all soon. Thank y'all for coming. Thank y'all for coming, Mr. Seven. Thank you. Jason, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, little mama. We got to get a picture great, before great. we go. Yeah, we <laughs> Good night, everybody. This Thank has God. been Thanks After Dark with Malcolm and Lisa on Real Talk 100 Radio. We'll see you next week. Come on, fellas.